you only have one chance to make a good first impression. And that comes down to the same thing when you have a website. Take longer than three seconds maximum and you've probably lost the visitor's attention. Slow websites are an absolute nightmare. You end up spending a lot of time setting things up, creating your site, and then nobody actually stays around long enough to benefit from it. A faster website, you'll rank higher, people will stick around as long as your information is good, you'll have long-term visitors spending a lot more time with a lot more traffic. Today, we're gonna to take a look at 10 real-world ways in which you can speed up your website to make sure you get an optimal site to get visitors online, to stick around, purchase, do whatever it is you actually want them to do. So first of all, how do we go about finding out if our website is slow or fast to start off with? Well, we have a couple of great free tools. And let's quickly take a look at the three that I would recommend using just to check things out and then to use those to monitor and maintain your entire site speed when you make updates and changes using any or all of the 10 that I recommend in this video today. So first on our hit list is PageSpeed Insights from Google. See, as Google is the primary search engine that most of us want to rank on, this is the one that I recommend using to start off with to get a good baseline for where you are in the eyes of Google. So all you need to do is insert the URL to your website, hit the analyze button, wait a few moments, and then it's gonna come back with a set of results. You can use those then as the baseline to make sure that any updates or changes you make using any or all of the 10 recommendations in this video, you can just monitor and see what works the best for you. Now, once you've gone ahead, inserted it and analyzed it, it's gonna come back with a lot of information. What we're interested in right now is to find out what our baseline score is. And as you can see on a mobile device, YouTube is scoring pretty low. You can also check out on desktop. And this is where you're gonna kind of test things out. And as you make changes, you're gonna come back, rerun this diagnostic, see exactly what's happening. The second one I would recommend is GT Metrics. Now GT Metrics works in a similar fashion, but it's a little bit more human readable. Again, the same thing applies. You simply drop the URL to the website that you want, hit the analyze button, and it's gonna come back with a set of grades, web vital information, and again, more information, telling you things that you need to address. So this gives you a great starting point. So the next one I would recommend would be Pingdom. All you need to do is the same thing, drop the URL to your site or the page you want to test, choose where you want to test from, from all the different options, nearest to you is usually the best, or if you have a large audience in a specific country, set the server close to them. This will then come back with a set of simple results. All three can be used in conjunction, or you can pick and choose the best one that you find the easiest to understand to get started. So that's how we go about testing things. How do we go about actually improving things? Well, let's start off with the first of our 10 recommendations. Now, the first thing I would recommend is making sure that you have the best hosting for the site that you have online. Now, cost is an implicating factor, but sometimes if you want the best, you have to pay for the best. Now, there are four different types of hosting that you can choose from. Shared hosting, which is basically the cheapest option in most use cases, and most people will start off with this. Next up, you have a virtual private server, which acts like your own dedicated server, but it's still shared among more different accounts, but nowhere near as many as a typical shared account setup. The third option is a dedicated server. This is generally the most expensive of all the options, and this gives you an entire server to yourself, so you have all of the resources. This is generally the kind of thing you'd wanna look at when you have very, very big, very, very popular websites, e-commerce sites, those kinds of things, that get tens of thousands of visitors every single hour of the day. The sort of hybrid between all of these is cloud hosting. Now, cloud hosting gives you a great simple starting point that can be scaled very easily. Now, there are lots and lots of options out there to choose from when it comes to hosting. A couple that I would recommend taking a look at would be if you want simple shared hosting, scalable hosting, and so on, then I would recommend taking a look at SiteGround. It's relatively cost-effective, a decent starting point, and is a good point to get your feet wet. But if you want to go beyond that, I would recommend taking a look at Cloudways. Cloudways gives you the ability to have cloud hosting with a much more simple, straightforward interface to get you up and running in double quick time. If you want to check out the series of videos I did on getting started with Cloudways, I'll put a link in the corner and in the description so you can check that out to get a good head start on how to use it. You've also then got dedicated WordPress-based servers, things like Kinster and so on, and all of these are great options that have scalability in mind. So check those out, like I say, links in the description if you want to take a look. 
Next on our list is a CDN or content delivery network. And what this basically does is when you have visitors from different countries that are different countries to where your server resides, they'll have a longer wait time to get the actual page and the graphics and things to display. A CDN allows you to have all of the key component parts of your site, of your page, spread out over the globe in various different locations. What this does is it means that when someone accesses a page in America, in France, in Germany, they get a much quicker experience because copies of the files are located on servers that are closer to them. This just speeds up the whole process and is a great cost-effective and relatively easy way of speeding up your website. Now, if you're looking for a completely free option, you don't wanna spend any money and you wanna see if CDN works for you, I would recommend checking out Cloudflare. Cloudflare.com gives you a free platform which you can get started on, and this should boost most websites that have zero or little budget. If you wanna go up another level though, I would recommend checking out Bunny CDN. Now, Bunny CDN is a paid option, but it's a incredibly cost-effective, relatively cheap option. It can cost you pennies or cents per day for relatively busy sites. Now I've covered how to get started with Bunny CDN, which you can check out in the video that's linked in the corner and in the description if you want to find out more. Now next on our list is minifying the files that are part of your website. Things like the CSS, the HTML and the JavaScript. All of these can end up being very large with things like comments and so on. Now this might sound daunting and quite complex, but the reality is there are lots of plugins that allow you to do this with one simple click. If you want something that's free, I would highly recommend checking out Auto Optimize. This is a great simple to use tool that has minimal options but can have a noticeable impact on the speed of your site and includes minification options for CSS, JavaScript and HTML. But tools like WP Rocket gives you lots of great options that don't break the bank. You can get started with a simple single site license and it includes a ton of really useful tools and options to speed up your site. There are lots and lots of really great guides to get you up to speed with getting the best out of WP Rocket. The best thing is you can very quickly and easily try various things out and then run them through the GT metrics and page speed insights and so on to see if the alterations that you're making have a noticeable impact upon speed and also those things like web vitals and so on. So I'd recommend taking a look at WP Rocket or Auto Optimize to help you minify those files and speed up the loading of your site. This works great in conjunction with a CDN like Bunny CDN or Cloudflare. Now next on our list is to optimize your images before you upload them. Yes, you can use services that will auto optimize on your website and WP Rocket is a great example of doing that, but nothing is better than optimizing them before you upload them so you can check the quality and you can maintain that everything is exactly as you want. You can do this with various different free tools online or you can use services that in conjunction with your website, whatever kind of works for you the best. I would always recommend though optimizing before you upload. So we've got some great free tools like TinyPNG or TinyJPEG, both exactly the same website doing the same thing. You simply drag and drop your images up to 20 at a time, drop them in there, it will then optimize them for you, give you information about how much has optimized them. You can see the results very quickly and easily. This works really, really well with PNG files where you're using transparency for drop shadows, those kinds of things. Always optimize your PNG files before you upload them. But if you want to use a tool to actually do this automatically online, you can then benefit from using things like WebP. This is a new modern standard for working with images and you can upload your optimized images and you can let a tool like ShortPixel go ahead and optimize your images to WebP format in the background so you have the best of all worlds. Any modern browser can have the WebP version, any older browser or legacy browser can use things like the tiny PNG compressed version and so on. So take a look at how you can use tools like that to optimize your images before you upload. And if you want to expand things when you upload it, use tools like ShortPixel. Now next on our list is web caching, caching on your server. And what that really means is making sure that you have cached versions, like in the CDN we talked about, this speeds up the whole delivery process. Instead of your website having to take the raw files and then convert them into a format that the actual web browser will view, all of that's done behind the scenes beforehand. And then all that happens is when someone views that page, they're given the optimized version. You can use things like Lightspeed, which is part of a lot of different servers. If you don't know how to set this up, just recommend getting in touch with your hosting company, asking them if Lightspeed is enabled. If not, if they could enable it. 
Alternatively, again, we could use WP Rocket, which has a lot of great options to make sure that we have all these optimizations in place. Okay. Now sticking with compression and making things as small as possible, if your server supports gzip, then I would recommend enabling that. Again, if you don't know how to do this, you can find information inside the cPanel, or you can contact your hosting company and ask them if gzip is enabled, and if it is, how to use it, and if it's not, can they enable it? But again, we can use WP Rocket to take care of a lot of this. So long as gzip is enabled on your server, you can use WP Rocket to go ahead and actually set up and work with the gzip settings to optimize and compress your site to make it as quick as possible. Now, a lot of designers, when they're designing websites, like to employ great looking fonts to make sure the site is eye-catching and readable. But the problem is, a lot of the time when you install fonts as part of your website, it uses all of the different variations of that font. So all of the different weights, the bold, the italic, all those kinds of things. You may not actually be using those. So it's recommended that you only install and use the fonts and the types of fonts and the format of fonts that you need for that particular page. By removing those excess ones, you reduce the amount of load time. You could also use WOFF fonts, which are these new standard for working with fonts. And there's lots of great options. Take a look at a site like Fontspace, for example. Again, you can download and you can choose exactly what to install, making sure that you're optimized to reduce that amount of load for loading in things you just don't need. And that's basically the message to take away from a lot of what I'm covering. If you don't need it, don't load it. Simple as that. Now, redirects is something that when you have a larger website or you update things are going to be something you're probably going to employ. But to make sure that you actually don't end up with problems is a good idea to reduce your reliance upon those. Once you've set things up and you've used a 301 for a certain period of time and the search engines have updated, you no longer really need that. The other thing to take into consideration is it's very easy to have multiple redirects and you end up in a redirect loop, which basically means it continually keeps looping around between those redirects. All of these take up server resources, HTTP requests, and so on. And again, they can cause problems. So I would recommend using tools like Ahrefs to take a look at any of these options you may have, any of these redirects. Make sure that you don't need them anymore and then remove them. If you don't need them, get rid of them. So just use a tool like Ahrefs to find out if you've got any loops, redirects, those kinds of things going on and address those inside your site. Now, the last thing I want to cover is reduce plugins whenever necessary. If you're a WordPress user, which I'm kind of guessing you probably are by watching this video, it's very easy to start introducing plugins for every simple little change we want to make. But a lot of times we don't actually need a plugin to do it. So I would recommend if you're doing simple things, see if there's an easy way of doing it than relying upon a plugin. For example, you can make simple changes to WooCommerce and so on by using the functions.php file as opposed to using a plugin. These can mount up when you want to make multiple different changes. So you could use one single tool, something like code snippets, to make sure that any changes you make are not breaking your site. And if you need to update things and change things, you can do that very easily. That's one different plugin to update as opposed to potentially multiple. So if you don't use the plugin, or you can find an alternative way of doing it without a plugin, get rid of the plugin. Not only does it intentionally speed up your website, it'll also speed up your workflow because you don't have to spend so much time updating umpteen plugins that you really don't need. So strip them out if you don't need them. And that's basically the 10 different options I wanted to give you in this video. All of these can be used in conjunction with each other or you can pick and choose whatever you want. But be realistic about the results. Not every website is gonna score 100 out of 100. There's a million different factors. And the more complex, the more intricate, and more the feature packed the website is, the less chance you're gonna to have to have that perfect score. So be realistic, optimize to the point where it becomes usable, fast, and that should be the goal. As always, all the links for everything I've covered are in the description below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tets, and until next time, take care.